Hey, Doug here. I've been working like the devil five days in a row and uh, got a lot of chores done yesterday and I thought maybe it's time to screw around just a little bit. So my brother came over and was uh, asking for some 9mm for a retreat he's going on and we were sorting through some and I found these little rascals. I have no idea who makes this. If you do, let me know in comments. But it's got a major hollow point and it's serrated and the question came into my mind if you actually shot this into something, what exactly would it do? So, that's the topic of our screwing around with Doug today. So, I uh, got my Model 17 Glock out, which I have a threaded barrel on, and a suppressor Octane 9 from uh, Silencer Co. mounted on it. And we're going to fire a round into a bunch of milk jugs. Now, wouldn't it be nice to have median gel or ballistic gel or wet newspapers or something? That'd be really cool, but I just don't have the time for it. So, every milk jug that comes onto our property goes in the trash blown up. So, we're going to blow up some milk jugs, take a look at the bullet, and uh, see what the performance capability of the bullet is. Now, I might go downstairs and grab a couple rifles and do the same thing. Who knows? We'll see what happens. Doug out. So let's just take a look at it. Just off the top of uh, my head I'm finding petals that look like this lying on the plywood. This has one in it. There's the entrance of the bullet. That's four. This one has uh, a hole here and a large hole here. And if I dump this out, we will find three more petals. And looks like the buck stopped here. This piece right here is what is left. Got a piece of plastic on it. So you can see you end up with a slug about a quarter inch thick and .355. All the petals have shredded off and that's the slug and it was found in jug number three. So there you have it. I would say penetration is super low. I would say total impact turns it into a shotgun shell. Not that great. Not sure I would load that up. I think the next one up is 147 grain um, federal round that we use for a service round. So we'll give that a try. Dug out. I thought I'd give this one a try. This is a 147 grain federal. Hydroshock I think they call it. We carry these in our service weapons at an unknown, undisclosed department. And we're gonna give this one a blast. As, just as a reminder, we went through three jugs last time, and barely punched a hole in one of them. Okay, just wanted to uh, show you my high-vis sights here. That'll focus. I said high-vis, I meant high-profile. They uh, get the uh, sight plane up over the suppressor. And they're also night sights too, because I'm sure the zombies are going to attack me at 2 in the morning. Alright, let's give it a try. All right, these are also subsonic. Running about a thousand feet per second. All right, 
Jug one is blasted. Jug two is blasted. Jug three has two holes in it, it would appear. But the bullet is inside of it. Fantastic. Looks like it bounced off the backside and uh, penetrated. So, just want to let you know what this bad Jackson looks like. There we go. That is one of the finest mushrooms in the world. And when I was growing up, uh, pistol ammunition companies were trying to push velocities hard enough to get a hollow point to open up. And what they've done now is they've invented technologies to make a 1,020 feet per second bullet expand to, I would say that's about six tenths of an inch and pedal back so nicely it's unbelievable. Hang on a second, working backwards with my camera. So that is a beauty right there. And uh, this is very consistent of what I find when I do this. I've done this like four or five times and I get the exact same results. So you throw a bunch of clothing in and glass and stuff like that, things change. But uh, for the most part, that is one beautiful round. And I'd much rather have this than uh, Fragment Boy from the last shot we had. All right, for now, dug out. So our next contestant, uh, since we're on service ammunition for police officers, is uh, Federal 62 Grain Bear Claw Tactical Round, which comes to us straight out of my hard shell vest. I don't have my service weapon at home, but uh, this is going to have to suffice. This is one of the finest rifles known to man. It's made by JD Machine, a good friend of mine, Jesse, and uh, he made it in uh, San Diego when his company was out there. And it's nice and it sports a GSL multi-cal suppressor. Uh, guys, if you don't have a very good budget, the next thing you should buy is a suppressor. All right, let's see what we can find. That one milk jug to see degraded. That one with three holes in it. This one's just the wingman. And this one has one hole in it. There we go. So the idea is to get controlled expansion and keep the bullet all in one piece. So here it is. Let's get away from the sun a little bit. As you can see, we've expanded to about a half an inch. The core is still in place. The back half of the bullet is designed by Federal to stay together no matter what, and it does a really good job there. And we've got uh, velocities of about 30 well, 3,000 feet per second, I would guess. I didn't chronograph it. And great expansion. And this bullet is designed to keep you alive when people are shooting at you. Very impressive. I've done this before and got pretty much the same results. You can see. All right, my next experiment will uh, involve my 629 44 Magnum Smith & Wesson, which just happens to be fact reported. A wonderful gun, but obviously I'm going to have to crack out the earmuffs for this one. This fall I decided I wanted to shoot a deer with each platform, and so I loaded up some 140 grain soft point bullets. I have no idea what their velocity is. Sighted it in with this gun and promptly never shot any does with it. I did shoot a deer with all three of my deer hunting platforms, 357 Max, 350 Legend, and 450 Bushmaster. That was pretty fun, but uh, this one never got done because, I don't know, I'm lazy. That having been said, let's see what kind of expansion we will get out of a soft point bullet. This bullet is probably 30 years old, I have no doubt. It uh, came from another reloader that uh, I bought all of his gear when he passed away. So we'll see what happens here. and. Uh, uh, compare it with our modern technology from our last experiment. So, here's an example of a bullet 
that never expanded. I'm guessing this damage right here might be if it hit the uh, bottom of the uh, or the top of the deck of my trailer. Tons of rifling, but uh, no expansion whatsoever. So I might want to take a look at another round like the uh, FTX bullet for deer hunting. The things you learn on a Friday afternoon here in Michigan. By the way, you probably noticed I got rid of my Carhartt jacket. It's starting to get darn near tropical around here and uh, it's up to 31, 32 degrees right now and wow, the sun's just baking me. So we're coming out of winter. Let's try something else, Doug out. All right, the next rifle we're going to shoot is uh, my 350 Legend. So far, all the guns that I've shot are guns that I use at work or I use uh, out in the field, and it's always important for me to know exactly what I get when I uh, load up a bullet and take it out in the field. Uh, most people just buy them from the store, go out and go hunting and hope for the best, but uh, I like to hope for the best, plus I know what I'm doing. So um, this next one is a 170 grain uh, Hornady interlock and these are hand loads that I made last year last summer for this year's uh, deer hunt and uh, I used a really nice browning case that somebody gave me and uh, it really looks pretty and I like uh, I like nickel plated cases because they they, uh, they can take dirt and so on and so forth so they work good in the field kind of expensive sometimes a little hard to reload but uh, they are a very nice uh, round and this is running about uh, 2400 feet per second if I remember correctly from my chronograph. I shot four does with this gun and a buck last year and not one of them went 30 feet so that was really nice uh, through penetration also. So I'd like to see what kind of mushroom I get out of this. A uh, lot of bad talk on the internet from the 450 Bushmaster and the 350 Legend that they don't get through penetration. Blood trails are not that great. I have experienced that and that's never fun but I've uh, never lost a deer because of it so always uh, try to find them if you can. Uh, this gun is set up for a suppressor which I do not have. I have ordered a, a Silencer Co. Hybrid 46 and hopefully I will have it for hunting season next year. Please Mr. ATF man bust to move will you? So we're going to take it over there and see if it can go through eight jugs or not and we'll see what happens. Very interesting. So the first milk jug exploded so hard it flew 30 feet and hit my car. The second one it did through penetration and stopped right there. and punched a hole in this jug right there just barely didn't go through obviously so we have penetration of two jugs and as you know from the past that's eh, not exactly that good but hey take a look at this give me a second That mushroom looks absolutely gorgeous. All peeled back. Jacket on the outside. Lead on the inside. That's punching a six tenths of a hole right through a deer. And the impact was unbelievable. So no wonder it worked so well. Very happy with that. I don't know about the penetration, but uh, very happy with that. And until I start losing deer, I'm not going to worry about it too much. I did get 500 rounds of 165 grain FTX bullets, which have that red tip on them and look really pretty. We're going to give those a whirl too, so that'll be down the road. Dug out. Our next test is going to be the 450 Bushmaster. I bought this uh, gun. I actually bought four of them from a gun dealer uh, as soon as I could get my mitts on them. And uh, sold one to my buddy, gave one to my son-in-law and sold the other one to one of my officers that works for me, I think. But uh, anyway, um, that particular summer I sighted in 
nine different 450 Bushmasters that people purchased and I did not find one that did not shoot a MOA group um, when I sighted them in. They're, it's just a crazy deal, but if you, if you really study straight walled cartridges, you'll find out that they're probably the most efficient thing out there. This is a 250 grain Hornady FTX bullet, which is standard. I uh, tinkered with my loads till I got it to about standard uh, factory velocity. Um, it would be really tempting to jack this thing up to like 2,500 feet per second, but the bullet's fragile to begin with, so I really don't want to push it that hard. And the other thing is, is uh, a lot of times somebody will come over and say, hey, may I have a box of bullets? And uh, I sell them or give them the box of bullets, and I really wouldn't want them to throw them in their M4 and blow it up. So I'm a bolt guy. Uh, the gun that I use right here is... Um, a Ruger American ranch rifle and it does an excellent job it's got a great accuracy <laughs> this is a scope that I, I took off a gun that I purchased and then sold the gun it's a mark 4 Leopold uh, three and a half to ten sniper scope and it's probably worth about 1200 bucks I don't know and the guns certainly not worth that but uh, until I find another scope uh, or another use for this scope I'm just gonna leave it on there it's 30 millimeters, so it really gives me a lot of um, a lot of vision and, and uh, brightness when I need it. So anyway, we'll give this one a whirl. Uh, this uh, whole video has kind of evolved. I was just going to do a couple of guns, but uh, I'd really be curious to see what this bullet looks like if I can hold it together. I'll be putting about eight uh, jugs out for this one because it's got a lot of power. All right, let's see what happens. Well, I see our back jug is knocked over. Let's see what uh, kind of damage we did here. This one's got a hole in it. That's got a hole in it. This one has one hole in it. And we get pay dirt. So three jugs and the rest were knocked over by inertia. And this is what we got out of the deal. We have a separated lead core and a jacket blown all the way back to the base. So we had the bullet disintegrate which is not good for penetration. Once it turns into a lighter object it doesn't go as far and we got total separation and looked like it would have been a really nice 5 8 inch wound channel if it would have stayed in there lots of power so uh, things to think about okay last rifle I promise this is uh, the first straight wall pistol cartridge limited access limited uh, performance cartridge gun that I built. I've always had a Thompson Center Contender. This is a G2 frame and I had match grade machine make this beautiful 22 inch barrel for it. People ask how do you come up with the length that you want match grade to make your gun? Your uh, rifle barrel and 22 is it because that's my birthday. And uh, once again I've, you've probably seen this before but this is a Silencer Co. Octane 9 which is strong enough to be put on this particular um, rifle. Well, I got a story about that, but I'll save that for later. So I've been using 140 grain Hornady uh, FTX bullets at about 2,500 feet per second, and they have a tendency to come unglued, and they kill deer really nicely. I haven't had any trouble with finding deer. A lot of times they'll hump up and die right there on the spot. But um, it, they do come unglued, and I could show you a whole bunch of them that I've recovered from uh, deer bodies. And so I bought some 158 grain Fury bullets, and that would be this little fella right here. Looks a lot more like a rifle bullet than the FTX does. Got a better ballistic coefficient. I have shot two deer with this 158 grain Fury and found neither one of them. So I thought today I would shoot a uh, round into the water and see what kind of mushroom, if any, I got out of it. I did find the core of one of them in the back hindquarters of a deer that I shot on a quartering coming at me angle. And it was back by the uh, back hock. 
and the core was long and straight and not mushroom going bit and it had separated from the jacket. That was not impressive to me but uh, I try to give everybody the benefit of the doubt because if I could get this round to work I would really like to do it. So uh, without any uh, further delay let's go out there and give it a try and see what happens. That certainly is a fine piece. I don't even know why Silence Go hasn't called me up and asked me to go to work for him. All right, the old Windex is glug glugging. And looky here. We have a bullet right in the bottom of it. Well, I'm not really sure this is a uh, qualified example. But it is mushroomed out very nicely. I'll have to cut it out with a knife, as you can see. But it looks like it went into the first jug and went down and uh, punched a hole in my deck. You know, that's why we can't have anything nice around here. Anyway, looks like it uh, mushroomed out pretty good. I should probably give them a try. Dug out.